Good you afternoon, can't. everybody. You can't do it. And uh, let's begin with a moment of reflection and silence, please. Thank you very, very much, and uh, we'll officially call this meeting to order as it sleeps outside. Uh, and uh, welcome all of you, and I hope you have a Merry Christmas as we begin this meeting tonight. And number three on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. To my right, <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right. <coughs> Remind everybody that the paperwork for this meeting is at the back of the, of the room. Help yourself on the table back there. And uh, item number four on the agenda is consideration of approval. Is there a motion of any kind? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to add to number seven a seven A, which we'll have Chip Heming Hemingway <coughs> and uh, his uh, presentation on what he's done so far is developing a plan for the pier, sir. Uh, anything else? All in favor of approving an amended agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. It's unanimously approved. So we're now on number five. Consideration of minutes for October 10, November 8, November 15, and November 29. Any motions of any kind? Motion to approve all four sets of minutes. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. It's unanimously approved. Number six, public comments. I have two people that have signed up. Uh, Mr. James Bear, we've seen you before, sir. You have the floor. Speak into the microphone. James, ba James Bauer, 329 Ocean Boulevard West. Um, I'd like to address uh, 7 and 19 of this, of the, uh, of the uh, minutes. While we're getting involved with what to do with the property that the city owns and while we're talking about Block Q, I would like to remind the, the council and the membership here that at certain times the, the uh, water supply system for this island is not up to snuff, especially during an emergency events. I would like to think that uh, with Block Q, there could be made a place where we could have static water supplies. Uh, you know, you've seen them everywhere on every farm. Uh, you know, just large, probably propylene tanks. They look like a silo. Maybe 10 to 20,000 gallons at each at each one. One at Block Q to service the east side of the island. One on at uh, seven. I can't remember the name of the address. The, the the one by the pump station. And what we could do is we could have static water there. So in case there was an emergency, in case, especially in case there was any kind of problems with the emergency pumps, that we would have additional water at very little cost uh, that we could be added on to the supply lines, once again, at very little cost, that might save a couple of houses here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Smith? Good evening, Keith Smith, uh, 105 Durham. Uh, I wanted to address seven, what is now seven A, um, the pier plans. Um, I was looking over some of the drawings, and uh, what I would like to see, or us to see if we could incorporate into that. Again, I'm reflecting on my childhood, as I've said a thousand times here before. But what me and my wife were discussing, and what we didn't see, we saw a place for adults to go, have a beverage, get something to eat, but we didn't see anything maybe for a teenager like maybe some pool tables, a game room, something of that nature so that we, we address the entire family. Because, you know, I have teenagers, I have future teenagers, and so my moments growing up around the pool tables, I was at Fort Fisher, 
but around the pool house or the pier house, there was just some special times because it was just a lot for us to do right there. It was safe, it was controlled, we're on an island. If not, then the kids are always going to be wanting to get off the island. And obviously, you know, we don't want an amusement park, I'm not saying doing that, but something that they could do to occupy their time, that would be safe and fun and friends could do it together. So that's it. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Number seven, <clears throat> Mr. Hewitt. Yes, sir, we've got Randy Baker from Pinnacle Architecture here today to um, run the draft master site plan for Block Q by the board and share it with the public. Um, Mr. Baker has joined us tonight. Thank you, Mr. Hewitt. Randy Baker, Pinnacle Architecture. Hope you guys are doing well. The, uh, the little sketch uh, from Google Earth that you're seeing there is, a, is the proposed parking lot for Block Q. The parking lot that you see maximizes the area of that site. Um, you can see we closed off the road going adjacent through that. I think it's Carolina Avenue. I believe that's what it is. Yes, um, that one is closed off, and we've got boat parking and um, public parking, regular car parking around the perimeter. Uh, with that, we've also got a toilet facility, toilet house if you would, bathhouse, and a little small area there for, you know, maybe a dog uh, park, little area there in the, uh, the left, bottom left-hand corner. Uh, this parking, like I said, maximizes the lot. Uh, we do need to get some soil borings in that location uh, and uh, to find out what kind of soil. It's all sand, of course, but to see if there's anything there uh, to move forward. And also, uh, the drainage, you can see those areas that we've got in green, those will be little detention areas and planter areas. But like I said, you know, this is just a first little sketch of, you know, of the lot. I'd love some feedback. Um, the area, it's a two-way drive going through there in between the, uh, the boat parking lots uh, or parking areas. It's about 35 feet wide. Um, boat areas, when you try to pull around, you know, you need some area, a large area <coughs> to, uh, to get around. I would love to open it up for questions, comments, feedback. That's what we're here tonight for. Um, Randy, let me go before the board, and this is on a, an administrative coordination note right. with you. Uh, and I don't know, some of you may have seen uh, public works out there today. We're doing utility locates out there for you. Perfect. Uh, there's, uh, uh, Phil Norris has coordinated that, so um, they're over there. Now we're not, we haven't uh, broached the subject of any uh, core borings to right. see what type of soils there are, but there was some digging going on because there's <laughs> some, uh, um, we want to make sure that we have the utilities located, yes. correct? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And I think uh, Mr. Norris is also with the topo at that area, trying to, okay. trying to run down. But other than that, I do have a couple of aerial uh, drone pictures there uh, for anyone if you'd like to see those. There's a, we've got a couple of drone pictures. I know everybody knows the site that we're talking about. But um, this is one drone picture looking back at the, uh, at the uh, ramp area and the bridge. And then the other one is a reverse picture of that uh, portion of it. And you can see Carolina uh, Drive. So, if you go back to the first uh, picture of the parking lot, uh, any feedback, comments? Uh, there was some comment about some green area, and that is certainly fine. Just uh, we were trying to maximize. That was our goal to maximize the site for parking. Okay. Uh, we had, I had <clears throat> envisioned uh, this is, of course, due to the, the size of it and what it's going to cost for the restroom facilities and, and the other things we have to have to develop this area. We were, I was thinking, uh, as I discussed with uh, a couple of the commissioners one at a time, 
that we uh, maybe use on the north side, uh, have the boats where they can pull in right off of South Shore Drive and pull into that area, and then a, 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 an area wide enough where they can pull back out, back on onto uh, on the road and go back to the uh, go back to the ramp. Uh, that would be something that we could start with now and have ready hopefully by uh, maybe the, the the start of the season uh, as and maybe have uh, I'd like to see a lot more green area at this point in time we just don't need that many parking places and a green area would be great if we ever see the need or find the need or, or given direction that we need more that green space could be transformed back into parking right but uh, uh, basically I think I, I spoke to you before the meeting the, the area off the South Shore Drive had the boats pull in be able to pull out the end and go back around uh, the parking around the bathroom itself I think that is important uh, but as far as this area back in here uh, allow that to be a, a green area possibly with some parking on the right of way parking around it as we have now. So, you know, that we wouldn't be adding 60 some parking places for cars. It'd be what we've got now around the edge of uh, the Brunswick Avenue and uh, Quinton Street. And then we'll have a uh, way for the boats to pull in and pull back out. Having them in this area here, I mean, it's, it's again, we, we I think, we could get 20 along South Shore Drive or somewhere close to that. And with a, a lot of these guys with the, the big boats, you know, they're 30 foot long, add five more for the tongue of the trailer, and then uh, a doobly pickup truck that's another 25 feet long. We need a, a pretty lengthy area. And if you've ever sat at our boat ramp and watched people try to back their boats in, I think a, 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 a parking where they can pull in and pull out will. Uh, <coughs> people from uh, getting their their property down right uh, with that said how many parking spaces are you guys looking for in the beginning I, they mentioned 20 basically boat parking well I Any, didn't draw it to scale I didn't have a, right my, my scale rule I'm with you just but I guess that it I got but it I just, got just about 20 along yeah. South Shore yeah a good idea I mean if if that is the board's direction well, that's just, we're fine with I that. I can't speak but, for the rest of them. Uh, I, that's the same things I had. The other, the only other thing I was concerned with was could we add over there in the, the bathrooms with the two handicap spots? Would it be possible to add more handicap spots there just because we're having issues with handicap to provide more? We can add as many as we need. And then like that, Rick, Rick's, those meet code. Okay. But, uh, but I, I think we would probably use some extra. Um, the right of way on the outside room, I think, is a good idea, and I would agree with him to keep some green. The only other concern I had that entryway onto Quentin, mm -hmm. we have to keep in mind those are houses over there and lights for boats and stuff. So I don't know if we could utilize an entryway on Jordan or Brunswick so that lights are not be directed at, at residences homes on Quentin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm that. I understand, and that we could just reverse the flow and have right. them come in here where their lights would be pointing toward the, the restaurant and stuff and then pull straight out and go to the right. ramp. So, it, you know, either way, I mean, it would, it would work, but that's something that I think possibly we could agree to get started on. I know we all agree on um, having the boats all on the north. Okay, we all agree on that. And I agree with we don't have to turn this into parking for cars immediately. But even with a green space, underneath that has to be the ultimate plan for what if you needed as much parking as possible. And then we can overlay the green space where we're saying right now we don't need it. Okay, so even if it's we don't need it right now, we want green space, it's still got to be there in a master plan and we'll just suppress some of it. Right. I'm with you. I agree with that. I like the twenty one spaces on the south side. 
Mr. Evans. Um, I, I, I'm, I commend you for the handicap parking, but I think it would might be uh, advantageous to have access to the parking area for pedestrians that may be coming from uh, the pier or the pavilion to be able to access the bathroom by, by some means other than having to approach it with a car and into a parking place, mm -hmm. like an open access. I see no open access other than a driveway access, uh, actually, possibly a pedestrian. Actually, if you'll see, there is a sidewalk going around connecting back to the main road. You see the sidewalk going around, we'd have to have that ramped up. If you look at the north end, there's a sidewalk going around where that parking, handicapped parking is, there's a sidewalk that, that connects that road there. So there is a sidewalk going So you've got, you're, you're letting them access off of Jordan? Off of, right. no, off of Jordan or off of Brunswick Avenue? Uh, it's right there, right where the curved bridge, what is that road right there? Coming off the boat ramp. Jordan. Jordan, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've got to have sidewalks around there for the handicapped parking and all that. So it just it, I, I don't see it. I don't see that. You don't see that so tan right, here? right there. Well, exactly. It looks, like, it looks like there's grass there. He's talking about having access all the way to this road, right? Interconnectivity. Yeah. I, I, that, yeah. That's, that's absolutely. What, that's yeah, what I'm saying is, is that they're, they're, the only access is from a parking spot. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's, yeah. that's, we, that's will, no. we would like to have access, outside access to the handicapped restrooms from the public facilities that are adjacent to the property. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. We would, we would anyway. So, yes. and I, I was, when I was thinking about handicapped parking, I was also thinking we don't have to cluster all of the handicapped parking by the restrooms. We could have handicapped parking um, where it's convenient in the section of, of car parking closest to the beach for people who are coming to the beach, aren't necessarily wanting to focus on the restroom. Um, the e I know the easiest thing would be to cluster all of the handicapped parking by the restrooms, but remember, handicapped parking is also people going to the beach, and I don't want to tie up all of the restroom spaces, what I call restroom spaces, um, with people who are coming to the beach for several hours, and that is that is where it's focused. Just again, these things are they'll evolve as we design, but you know that that front row of 21, I was looking at it saying that's going to be closest to the beach out of all of the parking in here, and. Maybe there's a couple places there for handicap parking. With that, and right now, I do not think the town has a sidewalk from there going to that area. Okay. So um, getting wheelchairs through a roadway might be, might be a little challenging, but it can. I mean, it can happen. So I totally agree with you, but I think there needs to be some type of handicap access Across those roadways and marked off. So if we do something, so. good. Thank you, Randy. I was excuse me, one more question. Yes, I was trying to rough scale these things. Are those both parking spaces sixty foot? Is right at sixty four feet. Okay. That's correct. Sixty. Sixty four feet. Sixty four. That's correct. Okay. Yep. That's it. Good deal. Any other questions, comments? What we can do is revise this plan, and I might give uh, give a couple of other options, taken from what I hear tonight, a couple more options of this. I would like to um, find out how many toilet fixtures are required, you know, depending on if we're doing for the bandstand or is it just a couple of fixtures. If we go with the bandstand, you know, within assembly. Um, that's one thing that I need to talk to the inspection department about and how many toilets that you guys would like to see. So other than that, right now I think our building is 40 feet long by 20 feet wide, something like that. So, but if it needs to be larger, smaller, something like that, it'll have to be up 
raised off the ground floodplain level. So there will be ramps going up to that level. But, uh, other than that, that's pretty good. Any other food for thoughts, questions, comments? Do the commissioners mind the questions from the audience? No. Yes, sir, Jim. Service permeability? Yes. This, depending on what type of surface, we, we've done geo papers before that will, you know, that will actually, you know, be uh, pervious in those areas. <clears throat> but what we've got shown is asphalt. Yes, ma'am. Would this be paid parking or free parking? It's paid Should parking. Paid. Paid park. This is paid parking. It's we have paid parking there now. It would have to be officially recognized. Yeah. Yeah. Could, can we get the names on the audience? Mm -hmm. First Jim person, Bauer. Jim Bauer. First, and ma'am, your name? Savannah. You got that, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Anyone else from the audience want to see? Keith Smith. Keith? Keith Smith. What, do you know what the elevation of that floodplain area right there is? How high would it be elevated? Uh, right in that area, it could be close to 6 feet, 12 feet, something like that. All I'm going to say is if that floods, we got a problem. It's a sad place <laughs> on Home Beach. Are y'all talking about where the bathrooms are at? Yes. Right. I would estimate that to be somewhere near the base flood elevation yeah. at grade right now, Probably or possibly good. higher. <laughs> yeah, but grade, grade is, you talking about grade, yeah. You're thinking like two or three feet up, right? I'm probably wrong, but I don't even think it's that much. Me too. That's, I don't think it's high at all. I was thinking it'd be a slab. Maybe. Yeah. We got a deer feed up. <laughs> It'd be two foot up. <laughs> Any more questions from the commissioners or the audience? Jim? If you, if you, you came with asphalt, I'm just saying, what has got to go somewhere? That's an enormous cave area. That's going to be some. Oh, it is. Oh, and those green areas, it's just like I was talking to our civil engineer. We've got to find out drainage areas, ponds, um, you know, uh, to clean the water, that type of stuff. You're exactly right. Mr. Clemens? There's actually a cake basin right here for a the cavity that ties into a pipe and just runs straight to the way. We may have to, right, we may have to treat that water before it goes through the if it does. Yeah, we'll quietly figure that out <laughs> if you get my hand. <laughs> But you yeah, did the, say you've the, used geopavers before. That, that is so correct. what's the what what's the what's the odds that we've got enough green area now to, to capture? From speaking with Phil, mm -hmm. I mean, depending on what we've got, it looks like we've got if you look at those islands and mm -hmm. stuff, he said we've probably got enough in that location. Yeah, we could do some on site containment. Exactly. Uh, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Any more questions from anyone in the room? If do you, not, do you have a calling card with you? Or I've got one out. But I'd like to have one before you leave this season. Sounds great. Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Thank you your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Rick, you got something on 7A? Uh, yes, sir. I'd like, uh, again, uh, Chip Hemingway with uh, uh, BH, BMH uh, Architects is here to uh, discuss what he has uh, come up with as a first first look at possibilities for the, the pier property. So. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to come and show you where I am as far as. Okay, thank you. Is there a pointer on me? No, it won't work. Okay. Uh, 
just uh, let you know where what I've done so far relative to our scope of work and where I'm headed and uh, get feedback on whether I'm in the right direction or if something might change or ideas that might come up and just general discussion about where we are um, so far. So, uh, we received the survey. I know, I think, Pat, you asked me how long it's going to take to get it, and I said two months after we received the survey. Of course, when I said that, I was thinking it was going to take us three or four months to get the survey, like it does on most projects, and we got it, like, the next day. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I've sped it up in our, in our office, and uh, still waiting for my structural engineer to get down here to make his kind of walk-through evaluation of the pier structure and the building. Um, and he is scheduled to come down here next week. And so I'll be getting some feedback from him on that. Uh, but this is the survey of the existing site. Um, and we have come down, we measured the existing building, which we'll be showing ultimately in a, all those walls in there and equipment inside the building will be part of the demolition plan. Hey, Chip, do we have a day certain when the structural guy is going to be here? Uh, I don't know exactly when he's coming. The earlier you can let us know what that is, okay. uh, the, the, the better for access and right. stuff Good. like Especially that. Especially during the holiday. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll try to get with him tomorrow and tell him. Um, and, of course, we drew up, measured, and drew the elevations as well, which will be modified in the near future. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of a couple photos of the existing facility just to refresh anyone's mind. Some of y'all have learned and grown up going to that facility, and <coughs> so you don't need a refresher on it. But, uh, you know, the entrance, um, I'm going to get into what we're thinking at this point on the entrance. The interior, of course, will be gutted, those walls and that ductwork. And, uh, will not will no longer be there. Those fish will be stored for maybe rehanging in the future. Um, this is the current pier entrance, the building entrance from the pier. And of course, it's needs need in need of some TLC. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do there. Here's the uh, current ramp that we've talked about in past meetings that does not meet ADA slope or requirements for handicap access to your structure, which it will need to. And, uh, and then one of, one of those pylons, I, I think it might be the second pylon from the right, looks like this, it's about half, you know, only half of it's left. So it's, it's riding out, we'll probably need to replace that one. Um, however, this is the worst one I, I've saw first one to walk up to. And then you, you've got all kinds of things like this out on the pier that our structural engineer will address. Um, and all the bolts look like this. You can't tell the head from the nut. And, it, you know, and a lot of the timbers that are bracing the structure have split right at the bolt. Uh, basically, you know, not functioning in the way they need to in the structural capacity which we'll be addressing in the scope of work of the structural engineer or, or you know, rehab of the pier. And, and what I plan to do is kind of tell you what I see as a rehab of the pier. And y'all can tell me how that sounds good or you disagree or whatever. But I would imagine all the bolts will be replaced. A certain percentage of these cross braces will be replaced. Um, but. All in all, the pier, to me, looks it's in good condition. I think once it, once it has a certain structure that goes from here to that second ramp, which is right out here, and uh, um, <laughs> from here to here, there's the, a certain type of structure. And then it changes when it gets here and goes out here. And, where it changes and goes from here to here, 
it looks to be, I mean, let's see, where's that? Let me go back to that. Straight as an arrow, you know, there's very little movement that's happening in that pier structure, from what I can tell, except for one area that has dipped down, and that's just the settling of one pile. Um, and uh, so replacing those bolts, preparing any kind of cross bracing that might need to be replaced, um, seems like a very manageable scope of work to get this pier structurally stable, or more so. It's already survived a lot. And you can see that little dip that I'm talking about right here in this photograph on the left-hand side. You know, worst case scenario, it could maybe remain, uh, but we would like to try to fix that. And uh, so the handrails, you know, they don't meet ADA requirements now. Um, and we talked about in a couple walkthroughs of the pier that some of the handrail structure is insufficient. It's, it's not safe. And it could become safe by rebolting it, or it could be that those uh, four by sixes that support the handrail or guardrail, whatever you want to call it, uh, need to be replaced. And then all the horizontal members on, on the handrail would need to be replaced and re space to um, have a little less space in between them to meet handicap accessibility codes and then the top rail so you know I've discussed with my engineer like we might just go through and replace all the handrails or we might just replace only the vertical supports that need it and then we replace all the horizontal members but either one of those scenarios gives you kind of basically a, a, a brand new look from the handrail. And the pier decking seems like it could go quite a bit longer to me. And here's a good picture of it. You can see it's got a little bit of age on it, but it's still in pretty good shape. You know, you might have 10 more years or longer with that decking. Sorry. And then here's another picture of the decking. It's kind of stained with some of the wildlife that's <laughs> occupied the pier at this point. Uh, and, and also, you know, the benches, at the very least, we replace the top. But it could be that you want a more substantial bench. I, I kind of, you know, I like that bench in that you got a place to sit, but you can't get too comfortable. And, uh, <laughs> um, so you, and also, they're not very wide, so they don't take up a lot of the, the space for people to walk back and forth on the pier. And uh, I, I, did, I took the picture out of the light post. But, you know, it could be those light posts are good and we just replace the light fixture. I don't know, the, the, light, I don't know the lights may or may not work. But I, I would assume you would want to replace them with something that's a little, a little more domed or hooded than the current light. <clears throat> but that, those are details to come in really the next scope of work. And, uh, so what we've tried to figure out is, that, you know, that this is a master plan of the site. And we know that part of the scope of work is the Hatteras ramp for emergency vehicles that we show on the bottom of the site on that drawing. And then a ADA walkway for the beach goers to enter the beach strand from the parking area. Um, also, we show on this, and I'll show it in a little larger in another drawing, is the darker brown is what would be a new wood structure. All that would have new pilings, new joists, new decking, new handrail. Um, and so what we're proposing is when you come out of the pier house that, and walk up to this first ramp, which has that small widened area up there, it would be a new structure. Um, instead of trying to rehab. And that's part of that where that rotten timber, rotten post was I showed in the beginning. Um, and then uh, that, that would be it as far as new. And then we just rehab the rest of the pier all the way down the length in the, in the manner in which I just described. Um, so inside the pier house, and this is a, a blown up drawing of that. And I know we've talked about that the slab needs to be replaced or 
repaired in a manner of over pouring and then pouring new concrete slab on what is currently the wood floor structure. Uh, and so in that process, I was thinking it would be a good idea to uh, cut some of the existing slab out in this area and that area and set, set the doors back so you would have a little bit of overhang protection of, from the weather before you enter the buildings, particularly on the ocean side. There's no way to, and, and also, it's needed on the ocean side because of the way the ramp works out and trying to get up to where the pier is flat. And so we kind of need to back up a little bit to get our ramp that close to have our runs meet ADA slope. And uh, so uh, the diff big difference would be that when you come out of the pier house, you would be, you would have seven steps to go up. Now, of course, you, you don't want to go steps. You have the ADA ramp that gets you around. And then you'd have a landing, another ramp, a landing, and another ramp all figured out to meet the slope and the runs of uh, handicap ADA accessibility code. And so that's the new part of the pier that, you know, easily constructed from land. And, and then in the pier house, what we'll talk about is, you know, of course, the mechanical equipment and the electrical equipment will all be replaced. And this is just a sample concept of what I came up with based on our discussion in the pier house uh, some few weeks ago was maybe there would be two businesses. One would be a tackle shop and t-shirts and actually charge people to walk out on the pier. And on the other side where there's currently a restaurant, maybe there'd be a new restaurant. And this restaurant would, uh, not restaurant, excuse me, pier concessions. It would, you know, sell whatever the, uh, the lease holder would want to sell. And, um, and I'm just showing this as a sample layout. But, but the most important thing that I think we'll talk about putting is the public <coughs> beach restrooms, which I have, let me back up a little bit, which I have put on the same side as the handicap access and the emergency vehicle access. <coughs> and, uh, I know the comment earlier was there are no pool tables and that kind of thing, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure if this building, existing building, is big enough to accommodate that, but we've tried to we just imagine it might. Okay, and this is, gets to what I was maybe getting some direction from you. We're going to show the public restrooms in there, and we're going to show restrooms in there for the concession slash restaurant building, and an employee restroom in the what would be a tackle or t-shirt shop or whatever it might be and that could be all we do you know and then you let whoever leases that part of it do the rest however you could suggest what the lease he might do by go ahead and put the kitchen in or breaking it up into certain things um, you know any thoughts you have on that um, we're open to that at this point, and we can show it any way you want to. This, I just kind of came up with something that might work well. And as far as, like, when I was thinking of families coming to the beach and they're over, and so at the top left of this building, we were thinking maybe there'd be an ice cream type of facility, coffee shop, that people, families can get their ice cream, coffee, or they go going back and forth to the beach over here. On this side would be uh, concessions, hot dogs, hamburgers, fried shrimp, whatever it is that person is selling there and uh, accommodate some outdoor seating. Now, it was suggested that there would be outdoor seating outside the building, but I think you're going to be limited to the amount of deck you can put out there because the building is over the camel line the way I look at it.
That's it, Tim. That's it. Okay, well, it's not labeled on the drawing, and I thought that's what we had kind of talked about, that it was forward. But when I look at this note on the drawing, the 60-foot setback, small structure setback line, runs through the building. Right. So, this line right here. Okay. It's this line right here. It's shown as toe to frontal dune. That's a toe to frontal dune. Okay. All right. That's where you're going to be limited because you're, you've got a 75-foot line. And then you got that 60 foot line, you got a 75 foot line, you got the permit in, then you have a 60 foot line in the area of the nominal return. And then you have that camel. Okay. That 60 foot line runs through the building. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you can have more outdoor seating than I have. And, and, and then the restaurant or, or concessions building could take up any shape of suggested that put the kitchen on the parking lot side. Kind of a no brainer. Um, that I should have done first of all, but uh, you know, our I, I, main concern is just getting the the, uh, the restrooms in there, and then the rest can be whatever it is. And uh, and then we have drawn and measured the pier, and here it is in the blown up version that I, my structural engineer will then take and do his kind of evaluation to be able to make notes on. And with that, that's, that's kind of the work that we've done so far in, far in terms of drawings. Um, and I'm, re I'm ready to open for suggestions or discussion about any part of it. Commissioners, got any questions? Yeah. Um, when I look at, I have been hoping that the 50 foot lot that was bought for accesses which is both the emergency and the ADA ramp out to the beach, that there was going to be some room there to actually have parking that would be dedicated to handicap parking. But unless you can push that emergency road all the way over to the edge of the property, and then even then still have to finagle some with the ADA ramp because you've got it coming off some uh, outdoor seating. I don't see that there's going to be any place for for any cars to park in there. Okay. And and that was just I mean I that was just something I had been hoping we would have. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but and I, I can see why you've got the emergency road the way it is because you're coming straight shot in from the road and you've got the parking already existing up against the property line, but does, okay. it make, does it make more sense to move the emergency road all the way over the edge? Well, I'm glad you said that because the one thing I haven't really worked, worked on is parking lot. And, you know, it seems very efficiently laid out based on the width of it and the length of it. However, you might be able to get some more parking up there. And, um, so that's a very good point. And, and then you actually have on the east side of the restaurant, you have some outdoor seating designated. And um, I'm just thinking that, that that's going to sort of um, inhibit people from cutting right from the parking lot to that existing access on the beach. Are we going to kind of have a little walkway or something? Okay, uh, yeah, so I, base, I laid that out using the more conservative line as the camel line. And so I'm glad to get that straightened out as well. And um, that we could have more seating towards the beach as opposed to off to the side. You, you can see where I kind of jutted it right along mm -hmm. what I thought was the camel line here. Um, and, you know, yes, I think that beach access should remain just almost the way it is now. 
And so with you, the two outdoor showers where people rinse their feet. Right. And, yeah. 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 Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and and you, you know, so you'd have two. You'd have access on both sides of the pier, which is Makes would sense. be great. Yeah. Oh, and, and I also noticed that where you have the four campsites, right? Uh, again, there seems to be a, a pretty good space between the last campsite and your the seating area. Yeah. Is, so, uh, well, was there a purpose for having that much open space? Uh, well, I was kind of not. I, I was stopping it where those existing power. Stuff. So it could certainly come on over, you know, if you wanted to have campers that close to the restaurant. I don't know. It doesn't, it, it, I, you know, that's up to y'all. Uh, We're going to um, probably eventually lose the only oceanfront campground that Holden Beach has. Um, and there is a big space there. Yeah. Uh, if we could get a couple more in there, okay, and and make them, you know, nice and well, wide the, enough so they can accommodate their vehicles and right. You, you know, my civil engineer's probably done some camper spots. I just kind of googled and found out. I, I I'm doing a campground right now, but I haven't sized campers. And and uh, yeah, I mean, we may get one more in and. And those may be too si too big. We can, we can look at that a little more closely as we go along. But uh, well, what's you know, there? We, what's there? They really don't have room to park their tow vehicle beside their camper. Oh yeah. It's, I don't know if they have it here either, but they might be able to park it not in real front. Right. <laughs> um, the one the one thing I changed I thought would be a good idea if you, if you stack them like that, each one would be ocean front. <laughs> I don't know if you have a stagger for the ocean front. And so I'll, I'll see if I can, I can get one or two more in there. And uh, also I need to just clarify the, the truck thing, the tow thing with it. Yeah, because you might end up using the extra space for them to park their vehicles. Right. And, and you will lose a little bit of public parking from them because of that. Well, then... In turn, in the, you may be able to have them unhook their camper and then park their four or five vehicles and right. run right. in some other yeah. spot. That, yeah. That's better, but right. just thinking out loud. Okay. And, uh, if we're going to keep them at all. Uh, <clears throat> I, I have a question. The outside bathrooms? Yes. The access, I don't know if there's anything that can be done, but the access is on the opposite side of our campground so it looks like it's gonna be much harder for our campers to access outside whereas the other private campground is going to be much easier for them to access that i agree uh, now and uh i i was thinking that the bathrooms would naturally be where they are now where the porter johns are but what that does to that space on that side of the pier house is it makes it quite significantly smaller and so it just seems even though it doesn't seem ideal for some people for the interior spaces and again this easily i'm just moving right up well and when we're advertising for rent the campsites on the opposite side the bathrooms for our building are closer to those campsites than they are to our campsites and so i agree well, i don't see that campground being there much longer I would, I would count on that. We're going to have, probably have the only five or six campsites on the ocean front in North Carolina. Yeah, and well, most, I, of the, and most of the motor homes and campers now are there completely self contained. Yeah, I would think that they would have them in, in their showers every night. Yeah. Um, so it, it, when I first started looking at this, I was like, well, we, we should have the beat. It should just be the beach access right in the middle. It's in the middle of the parking and it best serves. But I know that with the Hatteras ramp, there is a requirement for ADA wooden walkway to go across as well. Is that correct? 
Well, with the grant that went in, I, I think that you probably need to speak to both Tim and I about the stipulations in the grant and okay. then how this is drawn on the side because there were some specifications that went in that this might not be showing everything we need. Okay, do you know them right offhand? Or? Yeah. Part of them are is that we exceed the ADA requirements. This is going to require a longer distance for that ramp to begin and end. Uh -huh. So, and you're going to be limited to where it stops, depending on where it begins. So, uh, it, it goes back to the handicapped parking places. That part of it was also the easy access for the handicapped, and the the uh, the fact that we were exceeding those ADA requirements, which okay. means that there is dedicated handicapped parking at the end, at the beginning of it, and the beginning of it goes further back into the parking area. Okay, and so uh, and when you say it exceeds the rent, you, you're saying it needs to be 1 in 20? Yeah, we, uh, yeah and, uh, I actually expected it 1 in 20. Okay, all right. But we also, but like I said, we also expected with the uh, access for handicapped spots at the beginning of it. So okay. they're either got to be in the front of the building right directly there in front somewhere near it, Yeah. and it's got to start somewhere near that parking lot. Right, you know, we're just got to come out and start in that area. So uh, I guess, you know, i got to plot the, the dune there and, and make sure we get over it. And you, I don't know, shave a little bit of the dune. Maybe it sits in the dune a little bit. Of course, we don't. You know, depending on, on what it can, how it can fit. <laughs> I like the look on the face, shave the dune. Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, Chip. But once you get a little bit further along and, and talk some more with um, the staff there, yeah. um, perhaps we shouldn't miss the opportunity to also consult with the fire chief since this is an emergency vehicle access. Right. And, and I know that what we think as emergency vehicle is a four-wheel drive truck, but yeah. there's some other other things that may be unique to the fire department that may impact how that how that you know okay, plays sure. out yeah. and, and we can get we can we can yeah. bring uh, chief todd to the table so well, just just let yeah. us know yeah I, did i do that no well, it's me uh -huh. sorry <laughs> uh you know based on the comments that i've gotten you know You know, shortening this patterns ramp that goes over the dune right here, it could start up here at this setback line. The ramp continues near where I have it and creates some handicapped parking spaces there. And, and maybe they can come over here and there's a paved sidewalk going over to the ADA ramp, something like that. So that is very helpful information for me to get this design moved further along than where it is right now. Um, Tim, does the, does the Harris ramp go over the dune or through the dune? Yeah. Oh, over. So a truck can go over. Oh. So the reason I was talking about right. that is that the, the ADA ramp, the way I understood it, what needed to be adjacent to the Hatteras ramp. That's true. That, it's that lot that has been approved on. We have to give a parcel in the lot and we have to give a, uh, a description of the project. And that's what we described. Yeah. So that that was, you know, okay. I, then I was like, okay, well now we, have, we just have two accesses, one on either side of here. Works great. However, you know, it's been tugging at me to get rid of this beach access when I was trying to widen the outdoor seating. So all that is going to be go away and be, become beautiful. <laughs> a beautiful experience, right? I mean, the place is going to be, uh, you know, I've been saying it's going to be on fire with that activity. And y'all know that better than I do. But, uh, it's, I, you know, first started this, I thought we were going to build a new pier house, new pier and a new pier house. but now that I've gotten fully kind of involved in this thing, I think what you're going to end up with is something really good in the community. What you got. And so now kind of one of the things, 
and I, I'll keep going until y'all, everybody falls over, but so y'all just tell me it's enough when to stop. Um, you know, to talk about inside the building, what, how much do you see us installing or designing or trying to prepare it or lead tenants in a certain direction, or do I, should I just not even worry about that? Just put some bathrooms in there and uh, leave it open. You know, I think you want to put, we want to go, we need to go ahead and put new windows in. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the idea of being garage doors at a concessions facility awesome like that. I think you would have to prepare for a kitchen. Yeah, right. You got to put right. four drains in and all yeah, that. So. And, and at some point we're going to arrive at 50% of the price value. I don't know what that number is. I can't, come, I can't give you that number until you give me the actual numbers and then I'll talk about them. those things that were identified as safety issues and structural problems by the town prior to sale. Right, okay. So so one that we talked about not being in the 50% is the floor slab, the new floor slab, the HVA system and the new electrical system. And so we're going we're to put as many bathrooms and as many windows as, as we can and kind of beef up the structure of the building just through sheathing, not, no new structural members, but just getting the sheathing and the exterior of it and, and try to get it insulated. And then how much we go beyond that is going to be based on how much, where we are within that 50% or whatever, how it would come up with those numbers. Um, and then what I was thinking in the next year, if we can get bathrooms and everything in, that's when you address the roof. Or if in between now and that next year, the roof becomes a safety issue and you just got to repair it. Outside. Well, may I suggest those kind of discussions, let's not do that here. Let's right, okay, yeah, 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 all right. <clears throat> okay, well, that's where I am. And if, if you, <coughs> just, uh, I'm feeling good about where it's headed and, and uh, <clears throat> Hopefully all of them. <laughs> Any more questions from the commissioner? Are you feeling like the due diligence documents have pretty much captured whatever was going on with both the pier and the building then? Uh, yeah, I, I haven't really invested a lot of time in the document for the pier. I'm going to let my structural engineer do that. And, of course, we're kind of creating mm -hmm. that same document in our head mm -hmm. as, uh, as design professionals. Um, so we're, we're looking at the things we think need to be replaced. And well, I can tell you bolts and cross bracing were two things that were definitely right. in the due diligence. So when you said that, I was like, this is nothing new. Yeah, yeah, right. And so that's the way we see it. And we're going to leave as much as we can and repair only what absolutely needs to be repaired. Get the thing back in order. And also to look good. We want, we want to look good. All right. Any more yeah, thank you, sir. commissioner's questions? All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Certainly. Look forward to continuing to work with you. Okay. Sir. Yeah. So on my next visit, I'll, I should have wrapped up this phase of work. Maybe we can move into getting the thing actually designed. All right. And, and I brought this drawing to leave here, David. That's thank good. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's a good Christmas present. Yeah. And I have some handouts here, the, the old school style. If anybody, I'll just leave them here. Up here. You want one? All right, very good. Get the fire going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Chip. Right. Number eight on the agenda. Alexa the Mayor Pro Tem. Town Clerk. Um, per section 30.05, the Mayor Pro Tem um, shall be elected from its members. The normal term starts in Jan or I'm sorry, December. If you guys would like to change the mayor pro tem, you can do so by voting out loud or on the ballots, or you can choose to keep the. Is there same. a motion of any kind? Motion to reappoint Rick Smith as mayor pro tem. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Unanimously approved. Congratulations. Your, pit, your pay is the same. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Number nine, me you, meeting schedule, clerk. Okay, this is actually two parts. My part is the proposed normal regular meeting schedule is before the board. All the dates except for the March date reflect the third Tuesday of the month. We pushed the March date, or we actually 
moved it ahead to the second one because of conflicts. So if the board is okay with that, we would need you to approve that. And then um, the second part is Commissioner Murdoch asked that you guys bring your calendars so that you can see if you wanted to schedule a quarterly meeting, special meetings. So my part would be the, what's in the packet if you guys would like to approve that. And so post-COVID, we are continuing 5 p.m.? Correct, unless the board chooses not to. <clears throat> I'm good with it. Motion to approve the 2023 Board of Commissioners meeting schedule as presented in the packet. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor is aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? <coughs> she unanimously approved. Number 10, Madam Clark. Oh, I didn't, did you guys want to talk about quarterly <coughs> meetings? Yeah, you want me to speak to this, Adam? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yep, sorry. Um, with as many things that we have um, in progress and going on with the pier and, and block queue and stormwater and all our queues and RFPs that we have going out, um, this past year we've had a little bit of trouble getting everybody together. So I had asked if we could set aside four more days, um, one every quarter, to hold meetings about whatever we need to hold meetings about, um, like specifically wanting to talk about Block Q or the pier or anything else you guys feel like that we need to meet and talk about where we have some time. Um, that was that was my reason and we could go ahead and set that schedule if we use them we use them if we don't if everybody agrees that we don't need to meet then we won't meet at least two of which are going to roll into budget meetings um, so we could two of those could be set as budget as well as talking about these other things so i feel like it would be easier if we could do it and go ahead and set those those dates two of them we're going to have to have anyway for sure um for for budget purposes and and we could talk about the other things too i think if we meet more we can accomplish things faster and push things along a little bit quicker than once every 30 days and that's my that's just my thinking brian my only suggestion and I don't know if the others feel the same if we could have uh, the quarterly meetings maybe two days after the regular scheduled meeting that way we don't tie up two or three weeks with uh, meetings if we can get it all done in one week like we have the the regular scheduled meetings on the two third Tuesday and then make it uh, the the third Thursday to where we could we could do that don't want to tie up a Friday or a weekend but one would be Tuesday in a regular meeting and then now that's just the four extra meetings that way it's all in the same week I think it would be right and if helpful that, to everybody if at a regular meeting we decide we don't, don't need, need to do it. it then we won't do it but at least we would all have halfway planned to have one I think we're going to need them um, we've called probably five or six in the past year you know anyway off the cuff and I, I just I feel like four is a reasonable number and you know, I for one want to see these projects that we have pushed along a little bit as fast as we can possibly reasonably do it decisions made promptly so we can get some things accomplished around here just as fast as we can namely like block Q and you know these guys want to park their boats this summer man it's five months five months <coughs> away um, so if we can get it done, you know, by all means, we we need to try to get, even if we have to phase it to do it or, or whatever, we if we can come up with some way to to move anything along faster, it would I think it would help. I mean, I'm a builder, and I'll just throw out like um, if you're building seascape, for instance, right, and you you they don't like something that you propose you have to wait 30 days before you can even meet with them again to ask them if you like 
your next proposal. So it it really stifles getting anything done. And it's um, it's just the way they operate, but I think we could operate more efficiently if we had just, if we set aside a few more meetings. I'm not asking for one a month. I mean, <clears throat> we may have to call more than, than these four, but um, I'm just asking if we could to push in forward. Well, I mean, I had actually, I, I agreed. I thought March, June, September, December, those are quarterly, assuming that at the beginning of the year we're sort of organizing, I'll just call it the overall project plan. Um, plan for what we're and, then, and then again, March, June, September, December is quarterly, and March and June may be dates, as you said, that could also accommodate some of what we need during budget. <clears throat> and David, you might want to say it may not be, you know, those months. You may say it might be better to have a budget meeting in May or whatever, so we could adjust to prepare for that as well, you know, to kill two birds with one stone on that day. How about if I do this? How about if I bring up, and I don't know if this is, It'll be too late in January to do it. Is to bring a proposed budget schedule to you, and then figure out what the quarterly meetings are, with an eye on having those. I mean, March is probably a good start for the initial budget. Uh, June is probably a good end for the adoption of the budget. But we need to have some in between budget workshops in between that aren't going to satisfy the quarterly thing. I, I would appreciate a few days before we nail this down because those of us that have other board meetings and stuff give an opportunity to look at the big picture instead of. Does that make sense for me? It does. And the third, the third week of every month. <clears throat> Uh, I've got town stuff and college stuff and a couple of other organizations I meet with. That's a tough week. I guess a question would be, uh, are these going to be afternoon, after work days, or are they going to there's any time in, during the days in consideration? <coughs> I don't care. But Heather seems to think it's 530s charm or something but <laughs> well I'm just um, thinking about staff too no, I, mean, I, yeah, I, I, I would love it if we could have it during the work day instead of at night but we do have people who it's very I mean we have working people we have a working commissioner who has a full schedule a bunch of them a bunch of them and I understand if one of you guys can't make it but okay, I, okay. if <clears throat> if four of us could get here we, we can move some stuff forward. So, can we look at January? Can we do it in January, David? We'll just, you suggest your budget meeting day or? Yeah, I can come up with a budget schedule at the January meeting. <clears throat> um, we'll kind of play off of that. I mean, that, that would. Is that all right with everybody? Mm -hmm. we'll do it in January. All right. <clears throat> Number 10, um, town court. Sorry. <laughs> the Cape Fear <Bear coughs> Council of Governments is requesting that the Board of Commissioners adopt a COG delegate and alternate. Currently, the delegate is Mayor Holden and the alternate is Mayor Pertem Smith. Um, that's been the practice for selecting it in the past. So if the board agrees, we can just continue with the mayor and the mayor pro tem as the delegate to the board, to the COG. Do we need to make a motion on that or just say? Consensus motion, whatever you need guys to make a motion and vote. Is there a motion? A motion. Second, anybody? I'll second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Number 11, Police Chief Dixon. We're glad to see you out and about and feeling well. Yeah, glad to be back in the real world again. So, December, I don't really have much to talk about except the 
weather. Um, because of the weather that's approaching the weekend, we've been trying to get in contact with the DOT to see what their plans were for salting the bridge or anything like that because of the rain we've got coming in. Uh, so we're, we're working on that, trying to get in touch with them to get that ball rolling before the weather gets here. But with that, I want to give a public service announcement that we're going to have some bad weather this weekend. Freezing weather starting, I think, Friday. And we're supposed to run through like Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Um, so drive careful. If you don't have to get out, don't drive at all. Um, remember, the br bridge feet freezes before the road. So we will try to keep it open and stay in touch with the DOT <coughs> as much as we can. Um, but there is a chance that it could be closed due to icy conditions. So just want to throw that out there. Other than that, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, I'll be try to, glad to try to answer them. But I don't, don't have much to talk about in December, which is a good thing. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Perfect. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Evans. Inspections. <clears throat> I think that was a challenge. <laughs> See how quick I can make this. Here's my report. We were very busy. <laughs> um, as you see in the report, we're still averaging somewhere between 23 and 24 inspections a day. Um, we are uh, actually uh, running about even with uh, previous years other than the last of the COVID years. Uh, we are seeing a transition like we normally do when the economy starts to transition. We see where we start going from a higher number of new starts to a higher number of major renovations. Uh, that is a trend uh, for all the years I've ever been doing this. And back when I was a contractor, it was a trend that we noticed back then. Um, for the most part, uh, between 2004 and 2006, we had a big boom, and then everything fell apart. Holden Beach held steady in those years, and they held steady in the years when everybody else had fallen off drastically. But they have, but Holding Beach has constantly picked up uh, since those, uh, since that beginning year of 2010. Um, most significantly is the number of uh, uh, the number of uh, permits that we have that are active that we constantly <clears throat> monitor and work. And if you look at the sheet, you can see those. Those active permits of 319 are what we constantly monitor and work on on a daily basis. You can see that we have 30,000 new, new major, what we consider major renovations. We've got 13 of those. Um, we have 19 that are sitting in the barrel of the gun that are waiting to be picked up. And we have a total of 381. Uh, we've got seven that are in review. We've got 12 that are incomplete. And those are the ones that will come back them up now and where they didn't provide us all the stuff and tell you that we've been holding them up. The zoning permits issued are 14. The camera permits that are issued are six, and we've got two camera violations at this time. Uh, one of them was a dune breach uh, on in um, a major dune breach in uh, Dunescape, where we had someone who cut the tops and went just basically cut through several dunes. Um, they are they've been issued a their citation and they have contacted the contractor who has pl put the dunes back to our satisfaction but now they have to be planted with new vegetation and that's sort of thing. Um, our duties are vast and we do cover a lot um, we did have 409 inspections that were done uh, during this period and the permits that we serviced over that were over a hundred for last month and those are the ones we had to touch for inspection. Um, and that is the report. Any questions from the commission? Thank you, sir. Thanks, Tina. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you got number 13 also. All right. As directed by the Board of Commissioners in the November meeting, staff is prepared to draft amendment. Uh, to the Town Code of Ordinance, <coughs> Section 94.03, the Frontal Doom Policies Regulations, 
based on information provided by the planning and zoning board. If the board agrees with the information, that suggested motion is approved. Ordinance 22-28, ordinance amending Holden Beach Code of Ordinance Section 94.03 of the Prone Doom Policy and Regulations. Um, uh, the, this was basically ended up being a housekeeping event for uh, 94.03, but it does assist us and help us uh, with, uh, with the enforcement of that section. One question that has to do with 6.6, .6, where there is no change. Um, uh, there is a change there. It didn't get highlighted. It went from no structure other than the oh, four the, foot wide well, okay. to one. Okay. Yeah. But um, I'm looking at the sentence about, because this, this dates back a bit, structures other than the four foot walkway that exist when this section is adopted may remain in place temporarily. However, all such structures must be removed no later than December 31st, 2003. I got here in 2010, and I think every one of them was still there. I was going to say, what are we going to, this, this has been there since 2000. What we've been doing, you know, if, I mean, are you asking me how we're handling that? How we're handling it, yeah. Here's how we handle it. Whenever someone comes in and applies for a new permit, if they have a nonconformance, then they have to remove it. If they come in for a repair that requires a permit, before we issue the permit, they have to remove that section. So we basically bring it into compliance once they change it. It's a policy that has been used by numerous municipalities. My best example would be when Carolina Shores and Calabash were together, they had wrote a new sign ordinance that made just about every sign non-conforming. And so it had some of the same language, but it turned out that the that they ended up being only making them change those signs and come into compliance whenever they try to make a change to the sign. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been in there, but... <clears throat> it's slow. Well, it, it's not really slow as it is that it would... I don't know why it wasn't enforced or letters sent out or done a large scope, but when I got here by 2010, you got to remember, they're already, what, six, six years or five years past their deadline, so... I wasn't sure what the policy was, so I set a policy that when we find one, it, you know, if they're working on it, then they have to change it. They get to keep it as long as they don't mess with it. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 22-28, amending the Holden Beach Code <coughs> of ordinances, ordinances in Section 94.03 from policies and regulations. Second. In discussion, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And opposed say no. Unanimously approved. Mr. Evans, you have number 14, Beach Map Plan. Okay, this is, uh, this, I don't know how to, how to categorize this. Um, we were asked that to put together a beach map plan. We went, we were in the process of putting together a beach map plan and we ran into some issues between the trying to trying to get it done between regulation and policy things that weren't in place things that were going to be in place so what i did was i did everything that i would need in order to make a plan and then i thought what i would do is uh because we were asked to give an update what i thought i would do is give the update and let y'all see where uh we stand with all this and how how it filters into other things we got going on uh, and I, as a matter of fact, it, it, depending on what you do here, it could affect 94.03, which you just approved the change. So uh, that's what I'm saying. There's just a lot. Um, so uh, I'll try to go through this and, and, and do it for you. But uh, basically, we got, we got to talk about our existing public walkways. We have 26 of them. They're labeled and they're marked with the addresses and the access. Uh, the existing areas for beach mats that we have identified where we have the, uh, a good area would be the east end, which is PD, PW1, because there's a dry sand area and high water mark, depending on the CRC approval, to where we could actually have those mats. We've got Quentin Street, P180, uh, because of the dry sand area and the minimal high water mark, depending on CRC approval, 
we could actually have one there or have an extension there, and that one's already existing. We could have that as soon as we could get a variance, and, and we'll talk about that. Uh, the pier, the pier, as you know, is contingent upon the handicap ramp that would be built there. We may have enough dry sand area to put some there, but we got to talk about the high water mark and what it does to the mats while they're out there. Uh, areas identified for future handicap access. Um, we, we think there's four areas on the beach where we can have the beach mats for handicap folks. Um, and one's the 800 block. Unfortunately, the 800 block is, a, a, we do have an access there, but years ago, because of safety fat reasons, we removed the walkway that was there. But the, the, the topography of that property lends itself to us putting one back. And so there could be a handicap ramp put there, and there's enough dry sand beach there that we could put what could be one of our lower maintenance beach mat areas there. How wide is that space? Um, I did, I had a slide, but I didn't get it in here in time. But um, uh, that space is wide enough because we had it there before for a full access for, you know, like a, like for trucks and for safe uh, emergency vehicles and to have the, the ramp to the right if we do a minimum ramp. So we would have an area, well, big enough area. Mm -hmm. Avenue E, which is on the east end, would require a public walkway to also be uh, put in there, which is at PW1. Uh, we got a, plenty of dry sand down there. Uh, pier project ramp, once again, that's another area, so we've identified that as part of the plan. And then we have, um, uh, there's a bunch, and we, and I'm going to talk about these. Since I got here, we've had a bunch of these ramps that me and Chris, we would go out ever so often and we identify whether they're safe or not. And as we've been having them built back, we've been trying to bring them as far as we could into ADA compliance, but because of the topography and the vegetation, we, we can't quite make them into ramps. But we've got a whole bunch of them that are ready. So when as the vegetation grows and we keep doing planting, or depending on whether we get more easement or whatever, because that's what they are, we just have to go straight out. Uh, they, they could be looked at and we could maintain and monitor them to see if maybe there's one of those out of all the ones that we've done the improvements on. And because we've done them as we've identified them, I would have to go out there and look at each one and make sure that we're not picking one that's not a, a handicap, that's not been pre predetermined to be. <clears throat> and then, of course, we've got the conditions we've got to contend with for existing and future areas. The vegetation is the big thing. Uh, just because it's got planted, it doesn't mean that it's established. And so we have to, we have to abide by those rules. Um, we also have a required ordinance change, uh, which would come about 9403 that might help us. Um, we've got to consider conditions, the title conditions. I'll give you an example. We put these mats out there, we pick the wrong places, and Chris is gonna, Chris's crew is going to have a constant maintenance problem. He's going to be out there all day long moving these mats in and out with the tie. They're not going to stay. So they, they could be an issue if we don't pick the right places. Uh, but there's going to be a wildlife study required. Uh, so far, we don't know what the policy is, what the range of that study is going to be, and what they're going to require. What we do know is, as Cam has told us, that it will be through them. So we are waiting on more information on that. Then, because of the way the rules are written now, uh, there's a lot of people that have put mats on the beach, or other towns have put mats on the beach, and then they have to apply for a variance. They apply for a hardship variance through the handicap process. Probably not an issue to get a variance, but just because they got one don't mean we are. It's how variances work. But uh, but you have to make that. You first thing you have to do is actually make an application. I hope that Holding Beach is not going to be somewhere where we put them out there and wait for our citation while we're trying to enforce camera and then we'll apply for a variance. I hope we we'll follow the process where we make application, get denied, and then we apply for the variance. So you got to think that's a process that you're going to have to go through. And then, of course, uh, the beach mats, they got, they got to be the landward of the static vegetation line and seasonal removing, removal during off-season. Right now, that's the rule, is that you can have them out there to where that last line of natural stable <coughs> vegetation is, but then they have to be removed. 
or seasonal. Um, employee responsibility, I talked about some of that with Chris. Uh, there's physical uncontrollable conditions. Uh, we're going to have to do some departmental policy changes. There'll have to be some designated responsibility and of course a beach maintenance and placement uh, remo and removal. And then again, we, I did run some numbers, I ran some numbers for the four locations for beach mats um, and I put those numbers in there and I ran, used my, my head to swag some, some numbers uh, for what we would need for engineering uh, survey and construction of those two, not the one at the pier because we know that that's been approved, but for the one at the 800 block and the one at PW1. We have one at Quentin. So for, for the easy fix, we could put Quentin out to where the last line of natural stable vegetation is and have one, of, have one that extends out there uh, once we get out to that. Unless there's a policy change at the CRC, we will be limited to there without a variance. So, and of course we're limited with all of them without a variance or a policy change or actually a rule change at the CRC. So that's where we're at. We could, it would be very easy for us to draw up a plan, but, but we, don't have, we, don't, we don't have the budget, but we do know where we can put them, and we know what we would have to do to get them. So that's my update. Any questions? When are we expecting <clears throat> CRC to make a determination? Since I the last had, two meetings, they've kind of been implying that there they were going to make uh, a determination. We got, I got an email from them that talked about April 1st for the new thing to be on there, and then there was going to be a discussion about it. I think I actually had it. I don't want to ditch it. Just go in the public here and at the January meeting. That's right. I'm, I'm sorry, the February meeting. February meeting, but there was a, there was an, a rule change recommendation, and, and we don't know how that's going to. But I, I actually got that in here. So. Any more questions? All right. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mr. Clemens. Pump station two. Good evening. Uh, Brain Engineering is prepared to revise the contract for sewer lift station number two with need engineering services that need to be approved by the board before we can proceed with the request for bids. Page, uh, your following page actually has the fee schedule or the pay schedule outlined, and it's actually an increase of $18,500. $6,500 of that's minor design changes in the plan. And there's additional $2,000 for uh, the bid and phase. It totals up to be $18,500. And it also had supervision phase. It was an additional $10,000. But this is basically, you know, we had this contract in place two years ago. And we sort of, let's say, bailed out mid-ship. And we bid it out to come in so high that we couldn't proceed further. And we'd actually need to make these changes before we can move forward. And some of the design changes that we're talking about, I know in the past, Pat had asked me a question, and I told her I didn't really need any major changes. That was just some minor changes, giving us another three foot of buffer before the breakaway walls went in, which I think is a good thing. And it was actually elevating that hatch there another three feet. Other than that, pretty much the same thing it was before. <clears throat> it's my experience on other boards and so forth, every bid that's out there is coming in considerably higher than what is expected and it's only going to continue. Yeah. Oh, I am worried because mm -hmm. the market is flooded with projects. But. Yeah. And I still, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to approve the revised contracts for list station number two and to allow the town staff to proceed with the bid request. All right, so second. Second. Discussion, anybody? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Mr. Mayor, I've got a follow-up comment if you don't. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd just like to point out to the board, I know at the, the last meeting, um, I, I believe that the impression was that we're going out for bids pronto quick-like. 
um, since the um, community, the federal money on the community awards is so intricately involved with this project and that federal budget we're expecting it to be um, <coughs> approved this Friday the 23rd, we're going to have to make sure that one, that it does get approved, it's $2.7 million. So we're gonna have to make sure that it's a timing issue of when we, we, go, we don't want to go out for bids the end of the week, not have the money in place because those bids are probably gonna only be good for 30 to 45 days. So there's gonna to have to be a meshing of, of those revenues coming in with how we, how we go out and procure those uh, bids. So I just wanna, point that out to the board and the next question is is I don't know if it's going to be the federal budget is going to be passed but just want to make you aware of it and we'll we'll coordinate with mr. green on that thank you for your time Merry thank you for all that you do thank you mr. McRaney Money man. Yes, so I've got two amendments here. The first one is uh, to realize the money received for insurance um, from the public works truck that was flooded during Hurricane Ian. And approving this amendment will allow the town to move forward with acquiring a replacement vehicle. All right. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 22-29, amending Ordinance 22-14. Uh, to revise the appropriations uh, ordinance for 2223. All right, motion and a second from the judge. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Passes unanimously. You're still up, Mr. McCraney. Yeah, 17. The, the other amendment is to encumber funds to the peer renovation and repair line for minor repairs that took took place after Hurricane Ian, and also for any upcoming minor repairs prior to full renovation. I got. I just. I just saw something here. We we've got uh, the the text in Daniel's memo is correct. The the budget ordinance actually reads um, utilities insurance. That that's 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 not correct. We we want to we want to move that to the peer renovation and repair line. I think that we just transposed it. So the the intent is to move it to the the peer renovation and repair line, not utilities and insurance. Commissioners understand that. Yes. yes. All right. So we're back to the motion. We do have a motion. Did we get a motion? No. No. Sir. no. Okay. Is there a motion? Make a motion. All right. The judge made the motion to do that. Second. Right. Second. That's correct. All right. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It's unanimous. That it? Any questions of Mr. McCrane? All right. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas Thank to you. Merry Christmas. Number 18, Miss Pat. Uh, yeah, um, because Chief Dixon gave a presentation to my homeowners meeting and we were, there was discussion about firearms and hunting and things, um, went and we went back and we looked at what the current <coughs> discharge of firearms prohibited exceptions is. And in talking to the chief, um, he said, well, I've, I've not really ever considered this in detail, but some of what's said in there has never in my entire time ever happened, and I could certainly see that there could be an improved, updated version of this that will be clearer and timely for how things operate today. The chief is willing to bring his suggested modification to 130.01 at the January meeting if the board agrees that considering a more modernized version would be useful. And the part that's particularly modernized has to do with um, getting permission of chief of police to go out and destroy rodents, pigeons, squirrels, similar animals considered to be a menace. 
So that seems to the chief to be something that's never happened and probably isn't necessary to be in the ordinance. So if the board agrees, the chief is willing to come next month with a proposed change for the ordinance. Can we get a consensus on that? Or do you want to vote and discuss it? All right. So are you well, saying to remove that? Or? No, it'll be modified. <clears throat> okay. That's fine. Just to update it. Mm -hmm. Consider that a directive, Chief. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Can I, can I make one comment? Perhaps? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. oh, I know it's uh, we spoke previously, and I, I mentioned January, and now that I've looked at the January schedule or the meeting schedule that was in the back of this month, I will actually not be at the January meeting. If that's an issue, February would work better. February is fine. Okay. It's, it's just to get it done. That's fine. We waited for years. So yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's been, been in here forever. So. That's right. Thank, Thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you and your department, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Number 19, Mr. Smith. So, sir, I just, uh, this is a, an issue that we've been talking about. Uh, we had uh, the owner next door to the property of 796 come and uh, discuss his displeasure with uh, the condition of a town-owned structure. Uh, we had talked about uh, doing some stuff I in talking with the town manager today. Uh, we And the note that he sent out to us, uh, last week, uh, there has been an architect that has uh, come out and take a look look at it, uh, and spent quite a bit of time out there trying to uh, work on a plan that what we can probably do in the future. But I don't see that happening anytime really, really soon. But something needs to be done relatively soon. I think uh, I don't believe uh, a town-owned structure needs to be in that condition and, and look that poorly. I would uh, I would like to uh, see if my fellow commissioners would possibly agree to uh, direct the town manager to solicit uh, bids for the painting of the outside of 796 Ocean Boulevard West and to solicit bids for the repair of the AC platforms uh, and steps, uh, remove the antenna from the side of the house, or make, that, uh, make the steps unusable where we don't have any liability there with somebody trying to go up them and they fall through. Also discuss uh, the possibility of requesting bids from the local realtors for, for, for possibly providing a, some weekly rental activity in that facility to help offset the cost of these repairs. So in other words, if we uh, were able to get that done, the, the, the cost of repairing the steps and the platforms for the air conditioners could be recouped during the, the summer, and then hopefully by then we can get something in the budget and uh, some plans put together for the uh, future use of that building. Is that a motion? Yes, sir. Can you reduce that to some less verbiage? Yes, sir, I can. I, I'd <laughs> like to make a motion that we, uh, to, do, to take care of some uh, cosmetic upfits to 796 and possibly explore uh, renting the property on a weekly basis during the summer. Is there a second? Second. Discussion, anybody? I got a couple questions. Don't Y'all don't laugh at me. What color? <laughs> oh, God. I, I think the same color, David, Just would be good. But same color. Know. What color? <laughs> it, it You're thinking paint. purple and yellow. I, know <laughs> I just, I just want to make sure there's a consensus. It'd be my experience to keep it the same color <laughs> would be cheaper. It'll be cheaper than prime okay. it, prime it and we paint it the second color. I know purple and gold is the favorite. No, I wasn't going there. It's an inside joke. It's the inside joke. It's the same colors as Western Carolina. Are there are there uh, Carolina blue is a beautiful are there color. are there any other uh, specs re relating to to the the paint, like the type of paint, that kind of thing that need to be aware of? Oh, I don't think so. Make it pretty. And uh, the the follow on to that, you're just talking about the back deck st steps, not the ones to yes, the front the back steps. Okay. Are the ones that I tried to go up when I saw the door wide open and uh, they were a little iffy. And I think you told me you've had those removed. Yeah, we cut them off. We replaced those yeah. to get it to where it could be rented, sir. 
Okay. And then when, when do you want this back? For January discussion? January meeting yes, discussion? Yes, sir. That, that, that's okay. right. both, both sets, um, if we were to entertain the possibility of short-term rentals or whatever, it would all need to be safe. So it may not it may not be just the back step. The front one seem seem to be pretty easy to get up and down. They got right Yeah, I mean I, I know but yes sir, how is it expected? Thank you, Brian. Uh, <clears throat> All right, are we ready to vote? All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor aye. say no. It's unanimous. I believe you're still up, Mr. Smith. Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> this is uh, information that I've gathered uh, from uh, Holden Beach residents, uh, and some of my fellow commissioners have also, due to the fact that I was putting this on the agenda, have uh, have requested a discussion and possible direction for for David to review the information that we've given him, and uh, from the Holden Beach citizens on the first year of paid parking and return staff directions to the Board of Commissioners for the January meeting. Uh, that way we can, whatever changes that, that they see that are things that are on this 10 bullet point list, if they find those that are that are not doable or, or permissible, uh, they can come back and make changes and adjustments to it. But I think uh, what we've uh, come up with is a pretty good list of things uh, discuss po you know, possible changes to the way we handle boat trailers with no tags that seems to be an issue discuss the 24-hour limit on <clears> some <throat> of the author authorized approved paid right-of-way parking uh, discuss the po uh, possibility of having a free parking for the two festivals and in the area just in the area of any permitted event uh, Discuss giving each homeowner, not just the empty lot owners, one free yearly pass and apply and apply. They have to apply for those before April first of each year. Again, that means a person that owns eight or ten houses, uh, you know, each property one will be allowed one if it has a home on it. Uh, discuss and, and as far as that goes, uh, for the the free parking pass for each homeowner. It can only be at the request of the Auto Connect group. They can only be changed once a year. In other words, if they sell a car and get a new car or want to change it, they can do that one time during that kind of that parking year. Uh, discuss making more detailed breakdown of the first year's revenue and the weekly passes, daily parking, uh, ticketed revenue, and the percent of collections. That would be good to have those given to us so we can uh, uh, assess our our success and see where maybe some issues lie. Also increasing the fees to $4 uh, per hour uh, and then the, the increase for the for the day, week, and yearly passes. Discuss probably uh, possibility of changing the parking dates uh, maybe from the 1st of April to November the 30th. Uh, also discuss having our parking contractor install the signage necessary to reduce to review reduce the confusion that seemed to have a lot of ill will with the people that were trying to park uh, the no park like for instance no parking uh, signs on the marsh streets and the side streets all areas where parking is not allowed if some of you know they said well you, this is where you can park is marked but you know where can you not park and I think if we uh, allow the, the contractor to install a proper signage, I think we'll come out uh, way ahead. Uh, we might need to get uh, uh, some of our town staff to assist him in a street-by-street -street assessment to, re to review uh, any changes in the, in the parking areas and sign placement. Uh, the, and the possibility of eliminating all unauthorized right-of-way parking. So as far as a motion, to put it in smaller, smaller stuff. It's just to have the town manager uh, get with staff and discuss uh, the issues and the, the suggestions that we have for parking for next year and have them ready for us in the January meeting. 
That's a motion. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. Discussion. I got a question. Yes, sir. Can can someone elaborate? Because I, I, I cannot be the only one that doesn't understand eliminating all unauthorized right of way parking. That seemed like a double negative to me. Yeah. If you've got unauthorized right of way parking, I'm going to need some explanation then in order to understand that. I think he means. Do you, do you know what it means? I, I think he means okay. discuss eliminating all undesignated area right-of-way parking which at the moment we do have approved right-of-way parking outside of designated areas um, after paid parking ends in the parking season and for the rest of the year outside of the parking season right-of-way parking is allowed so I think you meant discuss eliminating all right-of-way parking except in designated parking areas, full stop. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Smith. We on number 21, town clerk. We have received the updated fees assessed by Green for Life um, for people who utilize the voluntary curbside recycling program. The 2023 cost for people participating in the program would go up to 106.88. It's an increase from the current rate of 86.37. Our, uh, we need to update our fee schedule if the board would like to move forward. So the recommended motion would be to approve resolution 2209 resolution amending the Holden Beach fee schedule if you wish to continue with the curbside recycling program motion, motion. to approve resolution 2209 amending the Holden Beach fee schedule for the curbside recycling we'll a second second all right Brian second discussion anyone uh, Heather is this just the, the, the amount that the individual person pays for the recycling yes yes okay thank you that's what that's what i thought <laughs> yep any more discussion no, hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed say no okay. <clears throat> unanimous madam clerk passes so. all right we read for public comment does anyone in this large audience want to have anything to say about anything that you want to talk about if you would raise your hand and be recognized, you can come to the podium. Anyone? Going once, twice, three times. We're going to number 23. Mr. Hewitt, town manager report. Yes, sir. We're still awaiting the final federal inspection on the FEMA project, FEMA Beach project. Uh, we've uh, been requested su to supply some additional specific details uh, by the uh, FEMA EHP office, Environmental Historic and Preservation Office. Uh, in case folks don't know, we're still up short about $600,000 in reimbursement. This uh, deep dive request for the detailed information is going to require ATM to provide us with some assistance in order to answer the mail. Uh, we anticipate those res responding back to FEMA within the next two weeks. And after that, we still don't know what type of feedback we'll get to our responses or what the final timeline is on one, the uh, 600, receiving the $600,000 in remaining reimbursements or just what that will mean for the total program. Uh, Ocean Boulevard resurfacing bike path status. This is not good news. Conversation with the acting division engineer, Caitlin Marks, uh, says that only one bid came in on the project, which was 40% above the NCDOT's engineer's estimate. That bid came in above $5 million, which automatically uh, sends it to the central office in Raleigh. Uh, it's been rejected. Uh, they will resolicit 
to have two time frames, one with a before Memorial Day, the same specification, Memorial Day of 23, and another with an alternative time frame, an alternate bid between mid-September 23 and Memorial Day of 24. The paraphrased quote from Caitlin is that they are, it is not likely that there'll be a responsive bid presented as the first option. The alternative is more realistic. That would be pushing the project off for a year. Uh, 796. Before we leave that, if I can interrupt you, this, this really is so embarrassing. I think this four years in a row, I promised the public that the bike path was coming, and now I'm a liar again. <clears throat> and I mean, as late as the Holden Beach POA meeting, I think, <laughs> Pat, didn't I say that it was gonna be mm -hmm. in place and everything was on go, and uh, this came as an unbelievable shock. And not only to me, but I think to our uh, DOT people of this area, uh, everyone was excited about it and the bad news is as I said a minute ago everything just keeps going up I I don't know where where things are going to end but I just apologize to everybody I was telling everybody in good faith that it was going to be done 30 days ago I was promising that but anyway sorry to interrupt that's fine 796 I believe there was mentioned that um, David Woods is uh, working on the preparation of renderings for the board's consideration. He met last week with Christy and Tim to begin that process, and we're anticipating uh, some rough draft presentations or documents for you uh, at the January board meeting. Uh, good news relating to the pier uh, for the public's consumption that the CAMA Beach Access Grant for the Hatteras ramp was approved recently in the total amount of uh, just under $67,000, of which about $50,000 is state money. Uh, and this is for the Hatteras ramp handicap access for the 50-foot lot adjacent and west of the pier that the town owns. Uh, for the board's purpose, this will require execution of a standard DCM contract uh, by the board when we get it. Those normally take their time matriculating down through the Division of Coastal Management, but that's a contract grant that you will have to um, act on uh, to acknowledge receipt of in order to execute. Uh, receiving, uh, working on executing administratively the uh, Parks and Rec, Rec Trust Fund grant, that half a million dollars received uh, or approved earlier in the year. There's an administrative requirement to get a second appraisal. That's currently underway, and we are anticipating uh, the first week of February completion date on that, at which point we can go ahead and submit all our stuff to part of to receive those funds. Uh, as a reminder, uh, this Friday, the 23rd of December, uh, we are expecting passage of the federal budget. Uh, there is a total of $3.8 million earmarked for Holden Beach, 2.7 of which is a, for the sewer lift station I mentioned earlier. There's $100,000 in there for stormwater and a million dollars in there for the Corps on the Coastal Storm Damage Reduction Act. As a, uh, as a reminder also, uh, the General Assembly convenes the long session the second week of January and we'll be communicating with our legislators to get some of uh, the town's priorities put forward. Uh, and lastly, Seagull Street, the right angle engineer, our consultant, uh, firm has certified the co final payout for the contractor and we'll have the assessment resolution uh, prepared for the board's uh, consideration at the January meeting. And that's all I have. Any questions from the commissioners? Thank you. Is that, and there's no way that uh, you think or uh, Caitlin thinks we can get this done this year. It's just really 
Well, and and this is a informal conversation. It since the responses to the formal bid was there was one bidder, and it was forty percent higher than anybody else. Um, it's just it's it's not realistic to expect that that's going to happen. But they still have to put it out as far as the, the um, state's contracting process. If the time was short eight weeks ago, it's actually going to be shorter. And unless somebody just falls out of the sky, um, it's not. I don't think it's a realistic expectation to to think that's going to happen. If you remember, we had an, a delay because of uh, some of the property owners inquiring as maybe some negative comments and so forth about it that delayed the uh, offering for bids and we all know what's happening every month that goes by everything keeps going up and up and up but anyway it is what it is number 24 mayor's comments something has occurred that i think it's a compliment for the town but i know mr hewitt and, and and so forth that went to California to make a presentation about what we're doing on the ocean front and got accolades for the town while while he was at that California event. <clears throat> but uh, in the last few days, the Great Lakes have con some, a town up there has contacted me in behalf of the town of Holden Beach, some things that we're doing here, and I'll be getting with the staff uh, to react to that. But it's just amazing how word gets out across the country about a little place called Holden Beach. And uh, for all the work that all of you do, whatever your part may be, I really appreciate that. And, uh, and there are some good things that the country is recognizing us for. And the Christmas decorations in the town, I've gotten several phone calls and little notes and emails about how pretty the town is. And it is nice looking and uh, Christmassy when you ride down the beach. And we've had some homes that are really decorated a great deal and mighty bright. <laughs> so, um, it's not turtle season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and trying to be brief, uh, just remind everybody about the docks and the walkways, the showers outside. Those pipes are going to freeze and burst. So if you haven't taken care of it, call a neighbor, a friend, or do it yourself, whatever you need to do. But it, it's going to be a a tough few days coming up and I've got friends up in Boone that say it's going to be below zero for at least two days in a row up there uh, this week so it's going to be winter time all snow skiers head to the mountains that's what I got to say Mr. Smith what do you have well again I, I think Alan as you said it's, it's been a really good year for, for Holden Beach we've done a lot of great things so far this year and I'm looking forward to uh, working with uh, my fellow commissioners and you and our town staff to continue these projects. Uh, I want to thank the firms that came in tonight to discuss uh, the Block Q and the Pier project. Uh, I think as we move forward, they are getting a better understanding of what we, we have envisioned. And again, those two pro projects are near and dear to my heart and, uh, and uh, my fellow commissioners as well. I want to thank our public works department. Those guys are just endless. They uh, they go above and beyond the call of duty uh, for a lot of people here on the island and and for uh, and for the town of Holden Beach. Uh, I also want to thank the rest of our town staff for their diligence. I mean, we do a whole lot with just a few people, and they really uh, I really am proud of uh, the work they've done for us this year. I want to thank all the people that came out tonight. I want to thank all the people that participated in our Board of Commissioner meetings all year long, some more than, than others, and the ones online that keep up with what we're doing. That's important to, uh, to me to make sure that the public is aware of what's going on here at the Board of Commissioners uh, when we have our meetings. I'm grateful to have Daryl back on board now, as, uh, and we have a full committee now. And I just want to... Uh, Hope everyone has a safe and happy Christmas and New Year's, and uh, we'll hit the ground running again in 2023.
Mr. Murdoch. I also want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. And uh, as always, we really appreciate the work the town staff does for us on a daily basis. Appreciate the engineers and uh, the ones that are working on these important projects coming out and, and giving your time tonight and giving the presentations very informative. I hope we can keep that up. I know the public really wants to uh, keep abreast of that kind of stuff. Um, it's the time of year like we were talking about when we came in. I'm wide open 360 days a year, but the brakes seem to get pumped a little bit at Christmas. And I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and I want you to really reflect on what is important, and that's your families and, and the, the people around you and your friends and the, just the, absolutely the things that you can't replace and that could be taken away from you at any moment. And some of those were this year, um, for me anyway. And um, you can't get those back. And no matter what goes on in the town or who's mad or who or who's doing what, it needs to be a time to come together and just, just get along and, and be thankful that we're here for one and, and that we, we do have things that we should be appreciative of that we take for granted day in and day out. And, and we ought to hold, them, hold things really special and dear inside of your person um, and pass it along to everybody that you can because there's a lot more positives in life than there is negatives and we all agree as adults and kids and everybody to disagree at times we're never all going to think the same we're not going to vote for the same people um, and things aren't always going to work out like we want them to Another thing that worries me, and I'm going to touch on it a little bit, I can't drive two miles, four miles, six miles, eight miles in any direction from this town that we live in that used to be small, that there's not acres of land being pushed down and things getting built and the infrastructure is going to fall behind and I just don't know how the area is going to sustain it. But I'm proud of you commissioners at least having the forethought to consider Holden Beach that we may be able to handle at least a portion of that by thinking ahead. And there's another reason I feel like we need to move these projects ahead as, as quick as we can because apparently there's going to be some massive growth in this area and uh, it, it's coming and, and I, I don't think there's anything we can do to stop it. But. Just be wary. I mean, enjoy the hardies that's going to be up at the end of the street. And, uh, you know, just have a Merry Christmas. That's all. Just just, just have a good holiday season. Doctor? <clears throat> um, I want to uh, repeat what a fellow commissioner said. We have a great staff here. They do, like Rick said, we have a few people that do the work of several people. And I think it was a good year, and they've worked hard, and we're very appreciative of everything they do. Um, we've had a busy year, uh, some growing pains, acquiring some property. Uh, it was a touchy subject uh, in multiple situations, but I think the purchases we made um, are positive, and I'm excited about the next year and the projects, and thankful for the engineers that came in. and. I'm excited about we've got some drawings going, and we're seeing some, some progress. Um, I do want to thank the Merchants Association again. I've run into a couple officers several weeks, and it looks awesome to see those cameras there. Um, I think that's going to help keep our officers safe, and I'm really appreciative, again, of the association for getting those for you guys. I think that's a big, big project for them, and it's much needed. I uh, just want to wish everybody safe holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year, and everybody stay safe, and we'll see you next year. Ms. Pat. I'm going to repeat what everybody else is saying, that it's really nice to see progress being made on some of our big projects. I, I think ending the year with two engineering firms coming and giving us drawings of what things may look like 
is, is really encouraging. It ends the year on a really good note. Um, and I'm looking forward to the January meeting because I think we're discussing absolutely everything at that meeting, so we'll have a good start to the year. Merry Christmas to the staff, to the town. Take care of yourselves, and see you in January. Judge? Just to say that <clears throat> I am honored and privileged to be among this distinguished group. I appreciate the comments that I have heard tonight. I think about the unique issues that this, these career people face, this board faces here, and the progress that has been made, and makes you very thankful. It's proud to be a part of it. Merry Christmas. Thanks, sir. Madam Clerk, number 26, closed session. Closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A3. Consult with the attorney in North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A6 personnel. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It's unanimous. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Merry Christmas to each and every one. We're Ms. back Rainey. in regular session. I'd like to make a motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It's unanimous.